please stay tuned. is holding a night of praise as part of activities marking the 59th independence anniversary celebration of Nigeria and 23 years of the creation of a point in state. People from all walks of life are fully represented in this night of praise. Members of the executive council, members of the legislative arm of the, of the state government as well as the judiciary are all here to praise God for taking the state to higher heights. Members of the clergy are also not left out. They are all fully represented at this occasion. This night of praise is going to feature praises all true. It is to appreciate God for his mercy on the state, especially the infrastructural development currently being experienced under the present administration. I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go to the house.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, the choir. Your Excellency, at this point, would like to take the second hymn. The second hymn, Blessed Assurance, and the State Mass Choir will lead us.
it once again. Gozier OKK okay, Governor of Ebony State, Chief David Nwede Omahe. This is still the live telecast of Ebony State Night of Praise, holding the Ecumenical Center where stakeholders from all works of life have been dancing in appreciation to God for the creation of Ebony State. So far, the Praise Night has witnessed music ministrations from some gospel artists, the likes of Gozier Oke, Feast on Stage, the Amazing Grace Choir, Eboi Mass Choir, have been entertaining the audience. The first citizen is exchanging pleasantries with the audience. Still stay with us.
And on 28th, we started coming. We've been in the plane in the past 24 hours. But we are happy to be here. Your Excellencies, our leader, the first executive governor of a point state, and the first first lady of a point state, Senator Dr. Savo Minyogo. We are happy you are here. Your Excellency, the wife of the Deputy Governor, thank you very much. Unfortunately, the Deputy Governor had to travel today because there is emergency to the Vice President tomorrow for a national problem with Ahupu uh, and Minwe. And so it's so important that he had to travel while I should have been here. Dear Speaker, my Lord, the Chief Judge, the former Millard, Your Excellency, my boss, my beautiful wife, I had to escape from That exist in the state. All protocols in place. I see our senators, I see national assembly members, I see my laws, the judges of Ebony State, I see the House of Assembly members, I see my ESCO members, I see the chairman of local government, I see coordinators, I see everybody here. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! I'm so excited. 
so excited. You may not understand the gains you will have to preside over a United States. I say that our state is a United States. Boy State is here tonight to praise God. From the past leaders to our present leaders to the judges and so on and so forth. And so we have to thank God for the peace of the state. We have to thank God for the leaders of the state. We have to thank God for the partnership with the church. And even the Muslim brothers and sisters of ours we have always supported them. We've always sent them on pilgrimage to show that we serve one God. And I believe that whether we are Christians or Muslims, we shouldn't fight each other. We have to aspire to do the works as commanded by God so that we can merit the favor of the Father since we are serving one Father, God Almighty. And so, I will speak on our focus by October 1st. But tonight, I don't want to interrupt the stream of praise unto God. But to join you to say, God, we are very grateful. We are thanks to Him. What is happening in Ebony State is not by power nor by might, it's by the Spirit of God, it's by the grace of God. Of course, we must be criticized. We are never gods. We are not without mistakes. But unfortunately, they don't really know how to decide. They say we don't create jobs. You see, you work with the ability that God has given to you. I was never a civil servant. I was never a politician. I was a businessman. And so my own means of creating jobs is to create lasting jobs not to create jobs through employment of civil servants. And what I see today in our nation is what is called social security is being handed over to our civil servants. And it's never enough. So here in Abonji State, we are teaching our citizens how to create the jobs through empowerment. We are teaching them through advocacy, through training, and we are also bringing them closer to understand the means of governance. And that's why by October 1st, we would have been able to create about 1,008 senior special, senior uh, technical assistant and technical assistants. And this means uh, they are the ready people that we insist that if in the coming days how to empower them and this operation make one million from what we empower them with and we give you additional one million and so this is the way we know how to create jobs and so when we said we don't want our appointees to criticize other governments His Excellency Dr. Samu Miyegu we bear me witness that it's been the tradition of governors. You don't allow your appointees to criticize other governors. You don't allow your appointees to criticize Mr. President. That is the boss number one of governors. And some people took on us, but some people understood. Because my question is, criticizing other governments and other governors and Mr. President, how does it help the poverty level in our state? Our eyes are on the ball. Our eyes are on the ball. There is no amount of criticism that will depart us from the norms. And so we are moving forward. Our budget is moving forward. And in the next two years, this will be the microcosm of the macrocosm of the nation we expect to have. It's not by power. It's not by might. It's by my spirit, said the Lord. 
The Lord already told me what he wants about the state to be. It's going to be a small nation in a nation Nigeria. It's going to be a city that is founded by God himself. It's going to be a place, a place of soccer, a place that people will come to learn because it's not by power of man, but it's by the Spirit of God. This is the Nazareth of Nigeria. This is the state that the nation of Nigeria is waiting to evolve. And we are in the process of evolving according to the will of God for us. So I'm very grateful for all the building partners of this great state. It is no longer a place of punishment. A place that civil servants at the federal level are sent as a means of punishment. It's now a paradise created by God himself. It's a place that people want to be. It's the safest city in the whole of Nigeria. We give God all the glory. Can we stand up and sing a song unto God? We give him all. Very much. Thank you very much, Excellency. Can we please put our hands together for our great leader, a man who has done us very proud, the governor everybody wants to have. We appreciate your Excellency. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at this point, we'd like to invite Pastor Yonis Oyeyemi, the chaplain of the Governor House Chapel, to please step forward and give us brief exaltation. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for unto thee shall the gathering of your people be. Father, we lift up Social media platforms, Facebook at NTA Network News, Instagram at NTA Network, Twitter at NTA News Now, YouTube at NTA News Online, or visit www.nta.ng. For live stream, visit www.nta.ng. Now, you can stay updated on the go, be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop, or iPad, or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can't hit the bridge.
Hello Nigeria, thanks for keeping a date with Newsline. I am Becky Maduchemo. In less than 48 hours, Nigeria will be 59 years old. Congratulations to all of us, great people of a good nation. The mood of the program tonight identifies with Independence Day. Apart from the events, we will tell stories about people who are doing extraordinary things. The aim is to motivate you towards your legitimate aspirations. There's also the solid side to the package. I mean crime. We've got the scoop on one that would make you cringe. So much to look forward to this week. But we must hear the news first. Elizabeth Omari, happy Sunday and over to you. Happy Sunday, Becky. It's nice to see you and welcome to a new segment of the program. Now let's begin with activities lined up for the independence celebration. The thrust of Nigeria's 59th independence anniversary interdenominational Church service in Abuja was sustained peaceful coexistence for national development. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo, in a speech titled The New Nigeria, reassured that all hope is not lost because the new Niger of God's divine intervention will be plenteous for all. Visionary leadership, selflessness, corrupt, free, and tolerant people, he said, guarantees the best in new Nigeria will be better for all. A peaceful Nigeria, a prosperous Nigeria. A Nigeria where justice, equity, and fairness shall prevail. A united Nigeria. The different tribes and tongues are not wedges of separation, but the joyful textures of our togetherness. God is ready to fulfill his promise. Reverend Daniel Mbaya of the EYN admonished Nigerians, especially Christians, to selflessly contribute towards the overall development of Nigeria. Speaking in the same vein, the National President, Christian Association of Nigeria, Reverend Samson Shukbo Ayokunle, said, Peace coexistence is panacea for national development. But it is important for us all to know that no freedom is cheap. Our forefathers suffered and gave their lives and their blood even for us to be free as a nation today. Making Nigeria great is our joint responsibility. No one can do it alone. And no institution can do it alone in Nigeria. If you think that it lies with the political institution alone, and religious institution does not have responsibility, the security arm, etc., they don't have responsibility, it will be exercised in futility. Deputy Senate President Ovi Omar Gege read one of the Bible lessons at the service. Among other top dignitaries that admonished Nigerians at the gathering were the Secretary to the Government of the Federation and former Nigerian Head of State General Yakubu Gowan. We now move to the judiciary. A British judge Christopher Borcher on Thursday wrote that Nigeria has the permission to seek to overturn a judgment that will permit a UK-based private firm process and industrial development, otherwise known as PND, the authority to seize over $9 billion in assets from Nigeria and enforcing reports. Process and Industrial Development Limited is a firm set up to carry out a gas project in Nigeria. It won a $6.6 billion award from an arbitration after the said deal collapsed. From 2013, the $6.6 .6 billion award went up to over $9 billion, and by August this year, a UK commercial court ruled that PNID can seize Nigeria's assets in the same sum. The federal government of Nigeria, with this development, dispatched a high power delegation to the United Kingdom to present its case as to why the commercial court of UK should listen to its side of the story. We are here. Solidizing both on the legal and on the peer aspect of the case. Members of the delegation moved with confidence, armed with facts and figures as to why the UK court should grant its plea. That borders on fraud, corrupt practices, illegalities, jurisdiction, and the application of law as it relates. The federal government's delegation settled in the Nigerian embassy for days, counting down to the date of hearing. During these periods, the delegation assembled its legal team in the UK and those from Nigeria. Quite a surprising case. I think the more information that's shared with the investment community in London, the better the government will be able to put back on, on this quite shocking. 
shocking and disappointing uh, situation. The UK lawyers will be working with the Nigerian government to set aside that judgment, which we believe to be unjust, unfair, and to have been cured using misrepresentation. Counting down hours to the hearing, there were high hopes of positive outing. Obviously, the people we met here are so taken aback. And I've gotten a lot of information that was it at all not known to them concerning the fraudulent activities of uh, PNID. And that with this narrative, I think um, the whole world will know that um, um, the judgment that was given to them was given based on information that was not made known to the court. Not the first time. They had entered some actors in the P and D who are also in the IFCO judgment. Yes, the same people. And, and they had a lot of companies. They have series of chef companies. P and ID itself is a chef company that does not have any root. It gives it Nigeria an opportunity to meet members of the international community to tell our own story about um, the fraud that the PNID was uh, was all about. Then the hearing date. After two hours, Judge Butcher adjourned for another one and a half hours. In the end, he ruled and granted Nigeria's request for a stay of any asset seizure while the legal challenges is pending. We are studying, studying the ruling from that perspective, from the perspectives of compliance, from the perspectives of the law, from the perspectives of available uh, remedies to us. What this means is that we can no longer be harassed by being and D. At least the next 60 days when we would have been able to meet the cost condition. Anthony Forson, NTA News. And out to health. Lifestyle modification has been identified as key to preventing and maintaining heart-related diseases and building a healthy population. This is the opinion of health experts at a press event organized by the Federal Minister of Health in collaboration with the Nigerian Heart Foundation to commemorate the World Heart Day in Abuja. Daniel Aderi reports. The World Health Organization says what most people may consider a regular lifestyle is what is responsible for 17.9 million deaths around the world every year. Nigeria is of course not left out of these indices, with health-related issues like stroke and cancer taking the front burner in the course of deaths worldwide. The World Heart Federation set aside 29th of September each year to commemorate and create awareness against heart diseases and this year's theme is tagged my heart, your heart. The thought of this year's event is to heighten public awareness about heart diseases and their associated risk factors and to promote in totality the cardiovascular health of the populace. The Federal Minister of Health is committed to implementing the National Health Insurance Scheme, the National Health Act, the Basic Health Care Provision Fund and other cost-effective interventions to accelerate attainment of the universal health coverage. Addressing the issue of fake and adulterated food products, the minister noted that Nigeria is blessed with enough resources to grow food that could feed the country's population. The Ministry of Health, however, alongside other relevant agencies, are intensifying efforts to ensure healthier food circulation in the country. Even in the forefront of advocating for what we have and what we produce locally is Mr. President, President Muhammad Buhari, we must learn to eat what we grow. That is not to say that the regulatory agencies do not do their job to monitor and ensure that what comes in is, is good for the concern of our people. One of the highlights of the briefing was the launch of an instructional booklet aimed at informing and educating the public on various ways to keep and maintain a healthy heart and lifestyle in Abuja. Daniel Adiriye, NC News. And we're not done with health yet. To achieve universal health coverage in any society, priority, experts have noted, must be given to nutrition as an essential health package. They are, however, worried that the incident of stunted growth of under five children in Nigeria still remains on the increase despite interventions by the federal government and donor agencies. In this report, Basi Taipan looks at the prevalence of malnutrition in the country. The 
5,000 days of a child's life offer a unique window of opportunity for preventive undernutrition and its consequences. Investigations show that the opportunity graphed with open hands perhaps could reduce the number of malnourished children in the country. Nigeria is said to be the second highest burden of stunted children in the world with an estimated 2.5 million children suffering from severe acute malnutrition. The problem that we need to think through as policymakers across the country. I've been at the vanguard of advancing nutrition in Nigeria. We believe that all lives have equal value and that everyone deserves all it takes to live a healthy and productive life. It is said that malnutrition is not a medical problem. The record shows that it is a cause of 45% of all under five deaths. Through no fault of theirs, other than that their cognitive development has been retarded by a lack of attention to nutrition early in their lives. What then should be done? There's need for us to look at innovations and new approaches so that Nigeria will not fail again in uh, meeting the sustainable development goals. To achieve success in the reduction of malnutrition prevalence in Nigeria, experts advocate the scaling up of evidence-based interventions using proven contexts and specific modalities. Basi Taikman, NT News. Let's now shift attention to oil and gas. Key players in the sector are intensifying efforts at sustaining peace in the Niger Delta region through community engagement. This was the commitment reiterated at a stakeholders' visit to oil mining least 25 communities in its facilities. Leader Samson has details. <laughs> one but for the youths here it is the dawn of a new era and in the typical african tradition the only way to show their joy is to go like the drum even as they say they are spearheading development and safeguarding whatever federal government is placed there for the good of the people ekine japos is the president general of Kula youth organization one of the host community of OML 25 for him and other niger delta youths the era of militancy is over there is no militancy Kola. There was militancy. Uh, we all repented. They all repented. And right now there is peace Stop in Kola. Absolute peace. You can walk at 2 a.m. Nobody will harm you. Nobody will harass you. This celebration for OML 25 host communities, he to idol for over two years, the return of normalcy. Just a short period of time. Over 3,000 youths have been engaged. And you know, mind is a devil workshop. So now the mind is no longer idle. So the devil to look for where to set up his workshop. For the Minister of State Petroleum Resources and the Group Managing Director of NMPC, peace in the Niger Delta is a crescent. Our immediate uh, priority is peace for the community, not oil production. But we know that ultimately when peace comes, oil production will back and we can see the return of about 35,000 bar barrels of oil production per day. The people commended the NPC and the joint venture partners for the amicable resolution of the protracted impasse. From Kona, Akukutoro local government area of River State, Lydia Samson, NTA News. Thank you so much, Lydia. Now to power generation production capacity of 2,250 metric tons of liquefied natural gas per day. The Greenville LNG has gas plant in Rumuji River State has the potential for meeting the power domestic gas needs of the country. This part explains the visit by the Minister of State Power, Jed Gordi Agba, to the plant near Port Harko to see things for himself and also rob mine with the management of the gas plant. Emmanuel Lene has details. Greenville LNG is the power near liquefied natural gas production and distribution company for domestic use within Nigeria. It was established in 2015 to expand the natural gas infrastructure using an innovative virtual pipeline system to deliver gas to locations not served by the existing gas pipeline network in Nigeria, especially the northern part of the country. The world-class facility is equipped with three liquefaction trains fed with 38 million standard cubic feet of gas each per day. 
it has a production capacity of 2,250 metric tons of LNG per day. The visit by the Minister of State, Pa Jedi Godiagba, and his team to the Rimuji plant and the 110 meter cube Dufi Prima Foods vertical tanks in Port Harcourt is to explore areas of collaboration in the power generation system in the country. The plan for government is to get power available to every Nigerian and every home. And if we have this supply and this facility working in full shape, we will be able to uh, harness between this and the power plants and power generation and power supply will improve. The chairman and managing director of Green V LNG said, with about 90% of bitumen imported into the country, the project will go a long way in meeting the power and domestic gas needs of the country, especially the northern parts of the country, unconnected by a pipeline network. Today, we have installations ready in the country for 60 installations, plus the Kaduna one and the other mini LN and the other mini facilities for power. We are trying to bring the gap uh, between the north and the south and there are no uh, gas available there are no pipelines yet in the north so the idea was to bring the power to the north greenville LNG with the state of the art facilities is expected to be replicated in other parts of the country in rimuji a more local government area of river state emmanuel lene nta news Let's now talk agriculture. The federal government is providing an enabling environment for youth's participation in all aspects of agriculture value chain towards reducing joblessness and poverty among them. Musa Babali reports that the young agriculturists will be empowered to produce package and market approaches for international markets. <laughs> Working in an environment like this, clearing of weed and tilting the soil are some of the factors encouraging youth to go into farming activities. And those who want to go to sell and market of agricultural produce are often discouraged with setting of the local markets as well as the activities of middlemen. But all these are beginning to change as the federal government through the Ministry of Agriculture is introducing a platform that stimulates the interest of youth for farming. This platform includes introduction of technology that allows farming and marketing of produce without stress. And if you go around the world now, you see a lot of um, Nigerian products being packaged by other West African countries and being sold as their products. So we feel that we have to support this young men. We have to support this young women with facilitation and training on how they can package, brand, and of course provide market access for them. These youths are taking advantage of that as they engage in the production and selling of food items and beverages that are often not found in superstores. Items like potash, dry spinach, hibiscus non adobo, and dry baobab leaf called kuka in Hausa language. 25 years old Hafsatu Usman is into processing of selling. She says her target is international market. Like Garen Awaki Hausa food, and most people like it, but they don't know where to get it. Even the Zobo powder, it's easy. That's why we chose Zobo powder. Abubakar Audu, a youth core member serving in Abuja, is into cassava flex. That is Gary. He buys packages and sells. Oh, like most people into it. So there are a lot of opportunities for youth to tap into it to create wealth and also boost the economy. With this platform, these young entrepreneurs will be linked with standard organization of Nigeria and other regulatory agencies for standardization to make their products fit for export. Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. And away from agriculture, corporate governance and succession planning have been identified as critical to ensuring growth and continuity of any organization. This was the consensus of experts at the 35th edition of the Anno Omolayoli Management Lecture in Lagos. Annie Daniels completes the story. It has been said that an organization's best asset is the people, and that's when they have the right skills, capabilities, and experience, as well as the empowerment to rally behind the delivery of some company's strategy and vision. Speakers at this lecture with the theme, Corporate Governance and Succession Planning, to the crisis 
attitude of some entrepreneurs and captains of industry whose companies seem incapable of surviving beyond one generation, while some such companies are already extinct due to non indigenization of key positions and lack of proper succession planning. Corporate planning means as one set of people go, another set are there. They are prepared for it, not just by chance. Questions should be asked why Nigerians are not doing the job. And if indeed you cannot get Nigerians that can do the job, what efforts are you making to train Nigerians? They prefer solutions. Even if you want your children to take over from you, you must groom them. They must have what it takes to take over from you. And let there be a proper board structure that makes decisions yeah, for the, for the progress of the organization. The Omolayole management lecture is conceptualized by Dr. Michael Omolayole, a renowned professional manager, boardroom maestro, management guru, and educationist whose management career has traversed both the public and private sectors of the economy. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. And President Mohamed Buhari fell states with Governor Boyega Oyechala of Ocean State on the occasion of his 65th birthday. In a statement, President Buhari joins the Oyechala family, friends and people of goodwill in wishing the governor good health, sound mind and more years of purposeful and visionary leadership for the good people of Ocean State. The president commends Governor Oyechala for his determination to improve infrastructure, social services, human and capital development in the state, urging him to execute all the programs of the All Progressives Congress, APC, and fulfill his campaign promises to the electorate. President Buhari urged the governor to use the special occasion of his 65th anniversary as another privileged opportunity to rededicate himself to do more service to God and humanity. In ultra security, the Nigerian Navy is developing the mental alertness of its personnel to ensure rapid response to security threats in the nation's waterways. This was the thrust of a three day intra command sporting competition organized by the Naval Central Command to enhance physical fitness of its troops safeguarding the nation's maritime domain and critical oil assets in the Niger Delta. The event sequel to the recent sea training exercise that spanned through 156 nautical miles on the nation's waterways involves a football match in tug of war. At the end of the football tournament, Team Delta emerged victorious, defeating the headquarters team. The command have made efforts to bring criminal activities such as crude theft, sea robbery, piracy, and other associated crimes to its various minimum. In our sports, Nigeria's Divine Ududuro qualified to the semifinals of 200 meters at the IAAF World Championships in Doha as one of the best losers having placed fourth in hit one with a time of 2040. This was after Divine and Blessing Okagbari were clearly cleared by the IAAF. Kene Imagudike has details on sports updates. Nigeria's Divine Oduduru and Blessing Okabore Ihote Gwono are still firmly in contention at the ongoing World Athletics Championships in Doha, Qatar, following the acceptance of an appeal by the Athletics Federation of Nigeria, AFN, to the International Association of Athletics Federations, IAF, over a breach of rules in the entry of both athletes. A statement released in Doha Sunday evening by the chairman, AFN Media Committee, Amanzi Myers, deeply appreciates the concerns of all calling on Nigerians to pray for the team's success at the championships. Minister of Youth and Sports Development Sunday Dare has restated the commitments of the President Administration to restore the past glory of all stadia in the country. Ayomiko Ajibola reports that the minister who said this during the inspection tour of facilities at the 59-year-old Obafemi Awolowo Stadium Ibaro emphasized on maintenance as key to the development of the sector. I've seen the indoor sport, I've seen the main ball. I've seen uh, the, the swimming pool, I've seen the train pitches. I think that we need to bring this place back. The Nigeria Referees Association Saturday at the main bowl of Moshud Abiola National Stadium Abuja held a one-day FIFA list physical test. The report of the exercise, which features and seven male assistant referees, as well as three female center referees and four assistants, is to be transmitted to the World Football Governing Body Monday. 
fitness test is essential. Where referees were supposed to be very mobile, and our training should be by excellence. So if uh, some of them are not really training, very unfortunate. Those that make it will replace them. There is no two way about that. Meanwhile, the adopted mother of former Super Eagles coach and player Samson Siasia regained her freedom on Sunday almost after three months in captivity. This is the second time in four years that a 76-year-old Ogere Siasia will be kidnapped after she was abducted in November 2015 at Odoni Community, Sabama local government area of Bayelsa State. With sports update, Kenan Ima Aborike, NTEs. And the family of Auta Mach of May Katako Butura in Bokus local government area of Plateau State announces the passing to glory of the father, retired assistant superintendent of prisons, Mr. Auta Baturi Macham, who died on Monday, September 23, 2019, after a protracted illness. The late Auta Macham died at the age of 89 and his survived by his wife, nine children, and many grandchildren. Among his children is Dr. Makut Simon Mach Director of Press and Public Affairs to the Governor of Plateau State. Burial arrangements have been fixed for Tuesday, 1st of October 2019. Now let's take a quick look at the weather picture for tomorrow, Monday. That ends the new segment of Newsline. Beck is set to dish out interesting reports for you. Stay with us. We'll be right back after the break. After the break. With my Dino 4G, I can now upload my cars online, sell, and make plenty, plenty profit. Guess what they call me now, mommy? The new mega online car dealer. What's you? See, my way won't be like Shaki. Now, come and meet you specially and bring one big wine for you. Why you won't see? Eh, uh, your daughter. I want to marry her. No way. I've been wanting to know the Lord Hello? When glow for G day of you, confidence must be body. Data is oxygen. Glow for G, the new speed of life. Your number one for G network nationwide. The very best from Glow, the Grand Masters of Data. The 59th Independence Day Celebration Planning Committee announces activities lined up for the celebration as follows. Monday, 30th September, National Youth Entrepreneurship Empowerment Summit, Independence Edition, time 9 a.m. Venue, International Conference Center, the Republic 2, Independence Edition, Youth Concert, time 6 p.m. Venue, Millennium Park. Tuesday, 1st October, Independence Media Broadcast, time 7 a.m. Venue, State House, Presidential Chair of Guards, time 9 a.m. Venue, State House for Court, Public Lecture and Gala Night, time 6 p.m. Venue, State House Conference Center. All public officers are expected to actively participate in the anniversary celebration as appropriate. Boss Mustafa, Chairman, 59th Independence Day Celebration Planning Committee, and Secretary to the Government of the Federation. Sir. <laughs> For me to settle blessing, blessing for you. Mm. When this girl first got this machine, called me work. Now, also on top of ATF 4G phone, I just get to the press, press, press. I provoke a power mission to reach what time, eh? The only thing I make a girl to make she master art come off of my job. And later, I come here, I say, This girl will go snap down, put her voice on internet. They take her to advance. Now, in the customers, they come with my shop. Bless it. I want to make you help me manage my shop now. Um, my name is. But I think now I'm blessing start for the same time. Now, you are blessing start for the same time. Blessings, you better start for the t shirt.
Yeah, for top of your 4G MTN phone. Business makes sense on super fast and reliable MTN 4G. Join MTN. Make you enjoy double data. Like a bird needs wings to fly, you need skills to be productive. No matter the level of your education, ITF can train you to acquire skills in areas like mechatronics, metal machining, facility technology, electronics and computer networking, information and communication technology, ICT, culinary art, and agriculture. Acquire a skill and transform yourself from being unemployed to becoming even an employer. Be a valuable Nigerian youth. Say no to unemployment and poverty. Yeah, it's time. Industrial Training Fund, developing the nation's human resource. It's the Republic Concert, Independent Edition. You don't want to miss the biggest concert experience in the capital. Featuring... to Nigeria because we're lighting up the skies with fireworks as we count down to independent dance battle finale in on the 30th of September at Millennium Park the Republic powered by OSGM brought to you by Edgemax and Sosa Welcome back. Nigeria's history is long but very interesting. As a nation that countries of the continent look up to as a giant of Africa, we have been through many phases, including a fratricidal war. Yet, we remain undivided in spite of our diversity. And like every other great story, there are several ways to tell it. Now, I will be doing it with mostly pictures from the surest source. There's no better place to unearth Nigeria's checkered history than the National Museum in Lagos. Right behind me, you can see the inscription there. It's written, Nigerian governments, yesterday and today. So I'm going to take you into history and bring you to the present. It's already looking interesting. Let's go. This center houses the photos and relics of Nigeria's heroes and leaders, past and present. Stepping in, you instantly teleported back in time. The feeling of nostalgia is overwhelming. Many visitors may experience a brief moment of déjà vu, invoked by the familiarity of the dignified faces that stare back. It's history in vivid black and white. First off, let's talk about the pink elephant in the room. I mean the automobile that sits comfortably in the middle. This bullet-riddled vintage car found its way into Nigeria's Hall of Fame following a tragic incident that broke many hearts on the 13th of February 1976. The then head of state, General Mota Mohammed, was being driven to his office when he was assassinated by soldiers loyal to Colonel B.S. Dimka, who led the historic coup d'etat. However, before this unforgettable story, where many twists and turns that define Nigeria's political history, they are projected according to the timeline which spans over 100 years. The images are categorized in the phases. The colonial layout features Nigeria's first leader, Lord Lugard, and his men. The following set of photos is just a glance away. But realistically speaking, 1914 to 1960 